Welcome to the Women's Money Wisdom Podcast. I'm Melissa Joy, a certified financial planner and the founder of Pearl Planning. My goal is to help you streamline and organize your finances, navigate big money decisions with confidence, and be strategic in order to grow your wealth. As a woman, you work hard for your money, and I'm here to help you make the most of it. Now let's get into the show. How do you talk about money? If you're like me and many other people, we already start with a difficult learning curve when it comes to talking about money because we didn't grow up with the most transparent conversations. And it's just not something culturally here in the US that we're that comfortable with. And so I thought today it would be great to be joined by a licensed counselor to talk about how they teach people to communicate just in general, but also about money. And then we can talk about how that can impact your financial considerations and relationships. So today I'm joined by my friend, Sarah Sylvan Joinen, who is a licensed counselor and owns My Motivation, which provides counseling services. Sarah is a counselor, but she also trains and um, helps other people become counselors as well. So she has a lot of experience, decades of working in the mental health space. And there's a lot of overlap between financial planning and counseling. So Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, we've known each other over the years because we played soccer together as adults. A long time. <laughs> it's been- I've been following your career though, and it's so fantastic what you do. You're, um, you started your business. How long has it been? So I have had my private practice for 10 years now. Oh my gosh, time flies. It has. I can't believe how fast it's gone because I, I think back and I feel like it just started. Um, and then we've grown into five employees, which I never thought would happen. And being able to work with so many amazing people with different backgrounds that bring in lots of different experiences that, you know, every day is a learning experience, but um, also being able to bring in that knowledge of what I've been been through all these years to be able to help lots of people is amazing. I love it. And if you're a regular listener to the podcast, you know that we really think that, um, first of all, we honor the space that mental health professionals provide um, to people. We often, I am often checking with clients, like, have you talked to the therapist about this? Things like that. But also both of our jobs are so relational and we had lunch recently and we were talking about like, wouldn't it be fun to do a podcast episode together? And yeah. the thing we kind of like landed on was communication. That is something I know must come up so often in your sessions with clients. It comes up so often because there's so many miscommunications that we have with so many people. And the hard thing is, is we always view things on our knowledge, our background, our perception of needs without seeing that the person that we're communicating with has a different background, is seeing things from a different perspective. And so a big thing is, is looking at when you're having communications with someone is understanding that if there's that miscommunication that you are missing something that they're having from a background that you have no knowledge of. And so I think it's so important to what communicating on when you communicate is looking at where they're coming from because so often we're in this tunnel vision. And I think that's so important on finances because we get so tunneled vision on finances and I think both spouses, you know, friends, like communicating with your financial planner, it's so tunnel vision that we forget that there's so many different variables on different communication things. That is so true. I think you, um, you summarized it well, that people are so focused on outcomes that the understanding that's necessary to understand motivations and why people want things, why they feel fear or anxiety or pressure and why things are you know more important to one person in a relationship than another all of these things come to communication are you communicating for understanding or kind of a one-way street of this is how it's going to be yeah and i think finances get into people think finances is black and white like we save our money we retire we're good 
but there's so many other variables that come into play that it's important to speak um, to what your wants are um, when we're talking finances, because we don't need to have a rational reason for some of our wants. And I think when we go and think finances, we think of it as black and white and our wants aren't important. And sometimes it's looking at what those wants are. So how you can build those in because man, when I retire, I want to have fun. <laughs> and I think that's something that we forget about when planning for our futures. What are those things that will find my life fun and what will make my spouse have like have a joy in their retirement age and then how you can communicate that with your financial planner um, because sometimes they're not those rational decisions you know it's making sure that there's something that I want that you know like if I'm buying a car sometimes I just want a red car you know and I don't need to have the explanation for it and so I think sometimes when we're talking our finances we like hide those wants because they're not rational but then we like have that pit in our stomach that, well, I really wanted that. Why didn't I talk about this with my financial planner or with my spouse to get those things that I've been wanting in the future? I didn't even think of this before the conversation, but I guess the first person you need to honestly communicate with is yourself. And yeah. certainly if you're in therapy or work with a counselor, then that could be part of the conversation. Because if you don't know why you're motivated to do something, it would be much more difficult to explain that to whoever else is trying to kind of get up to speed. Yeah. Oh, that is, it's so important. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of people forget about is that we do have to look at ourselves and look at all these outside forces that come into play that tell us the things that we want that then like that little thing, that little bug in our ear, that's like, but you really want this kind of gets shoved down because the, the uh, expectations are something different. And so it really is looking at those important things that you kind of shove down of not being important and looking at what it is that you want. And yeah, there are things that you probably aren't going to be able to do, but it is looking at seeing where those are coming from. So you can talk to the people in your life to be able to get those, those wants like to be fulfilled in the future. Well, I'm someone who really wants to advocate. I mean, I've got so many thoughts running through my head, but one of them is you mentioned, you know, when I retire, I want to have fun. And I think one of the jobs and goals of a financial planner is to integrate some of that fun and quality of life into the current and more immediate future. Because some people do think like, you know, either, um, you know, I can't spend money once I retire, so we'll quit having fun and or I, I can't do things now, I'll have to wait. Yeah, and okay. one of those things, uh, the waiting thing is something that I talk to people all the time about because we do, we kind of, some people, you know, there's always the two types that you were saying, but some people like kind of hold on to everything and then it's like, hey, as life happens, we'll, oh, we'll do it later, we'll do it later. And those later things might not happen or, you know, life will always get in the way. And I find it mm -hmm. so important to be able to enjoy your present moment because so it is like really communicating those things of like, why are we waiting until we retire to go do those things? Like, how can we build some of those things that we enjoy now, but also making it so in a retirement, we aren't like just staring at our bank account, not being able to do things. And so how can you spread those things out and how can you talk about those wants and needs? And again, it's looking at yourself and then talking to your spouse about their wants and needs and communicating how you can kind of mesh those and make sure your financial planner hears those. I mean, you talked about how we're so similar. Think of how much you have to in a job is figuring out what someone wants to be able to build to that future that they have and being able to have those communications of like, hey, I wanna go on this trip this year, is that gonna impact me in the future? And you know, do I need to like, can I do a African safari or am, am I gonna do a Chicago trip? But you know, really build into those things of seeing where you can do those middle grounds so you can enjoy life now and in the future. 
I definitely want to hear from my clients about what is important to them. I want to hear their narrative of their money life that brought them to this moment. So many people have origin stories of either lessons learned along the way, mistakes they feel like they made and or um, family circumstances when they were growing up that really impact their perspective on money. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think in um, the world of financial professionals, some people want to hear that backstory and are inquisitive about what's important to you. And others are really just the facts, ma'am, and really focusing more on your account statements and balances with the exclusion of how they interact with your personal life. And that can have varying results and outcomes because if they don't understand that you would be willing to have a little bit less in a different part of your life, if it was okay to do the Africa trip, for example, yeah. or that you, this trip is really important. You don't have to be able to do it now, but you want to be able to do it over time. Like the, the right financial professional should be one who is helping you to find a pathway to that goal and also telling you objectively where the trade-offs might be or where you may be risking yourself, your safety, not, there shouldn't be judgment in there though. Yeah. And that's, a, that's think of how often in our lives we don't do things because we're worried about judgment and like counseling is such a huge aspect for people to go because I hear so often, I'm not feeling judged on these these choices I'm making and I'm, you know, leading people into seeing the pros and cons of things because so often we um, don't do things because we're worried that we're going to get judged. And I think a big thing is, is really looking at yourself of what those wants are because the end of the day, your happiness is found within yourself. It's not someone else making decisions for you. It's the things that you do for yourself that make you the happiest and that's going to be your future. Not, I hate to tell you, Melissa, I trust you with my life, but my happiness is going to be based on the decisions I make in my future. And I want you, like, as you to help me be able to get those goals for myself, but my happiness is going to be different than um, your happiness. Well, and that's so important. I think you're talking about the individual, there can also be happiness within a family or happiness yeah. within a relationship. And so there's so many um, competing dynamics, not every want or need has to be shared necessarily. Yeah. And, um, you know, some people have the professionals, some professional people have the skills to see and honor, um, you know, preferences for two individuals in a room with shared goals and also individual goals and some don't. So if you're yeah. in a room with a financial professional where eye contact's only made with the other individual, um, maybe your spouse or partner, um, and or you're being spoken to in a way which is kind of a one-way street, condescending or things like that, that is part of your kind of the bill of rights of a client is that that doesn't have to be the case. You don't have to feel like you're being spoken down to or kind of shamed or ignored in the conversation. And that's such an important thing to be able to acknowledge is that if you don't feel your financial planner is listening to you, is really being able to look at if if they're not listening to you, they're not hearing those, those things that you want to do. And that's an important thing because, man, financially, you want to be able to have the freedoms to do what you want. And if they're not hearing those freedoms and, you know, is, is those goals meaning that I have to work a hundred hours a week, is that worthwhile? And so it really is like making sure that you hear the wants and needs and actually listen to them and also having those realistic expectations on like, okay, you're going to have to work a hundred hours a week for 10 years. Is that really worth getting those financial goals? is that taking away those present moments where you could be spending with your family and doing those things with your friends. And so it is like making sure that, that you're hearing what someone has to say, but also hearing the give and take that someone has to have. Well, when you're counseling people who are experiencing communication gaps, maybe they know about them, or maybe you're the one who has to reveal the, <laughs> those gaps to the people that you're working with. What are some strategies that you have in those counseling engagements to help someone 
you know, cross that bridge when it comes to communication and or evaluate the relationship or engagement? Well, one thing is, is um, I always like being able to write things down because one thing is, is that when we tend to have a conversation with someone and we don't, we can so easily forget something or kind of in, a, in like when you're talking about financial goals or personal goals, we start tail, tail spinning into something else. We start talking about something else and our priorities kind of get taken away. So mm. if you can sit down and evaluate on your own self on what your priorities are, you can say like, okay, we've talked about this one, but like, you know, I think we forgot about this bullet point. And so being able to really concretely first evaluate in yourself what you want, write down those important aspects that you find important so that you guys can communicate with them and find those realistic expectations because, you know, some things might not be possible. But also, if you hear someone say, well, do you really need that? Or do you really want that? That's when you can start questioning what's going on because they're not hearing what what you want and it doesn't sometimes we kind of start judging if our emotions are correct and when once we hear someone say is that really what you want we kind of back down because we start going well maybe i don't need that and so really especially when you're talking to your financial planner if they're really saying those things then they're not hearing what you have to say and it's really looking at hey why why do you think i don't need that and really questioning that person why they are um, not thinking that's important to you. Because as I said, is like, if I'm going to pick a car and I just want it red, I don't need an explanation why it's red. But we, then when we start talking about finances and going on a trip, it's like, well, do you really want that? And it is saying like, no, I don't really need it, but it's something I want. And so please listen and see if those things are possible. And so it is looking at that and really a lot of times when we start having conversations, we don't go, then we forget about some of the other wants that we have because we're starting to internalize some of our like self doubts and we stop thinking of all our bullet point things. And so it's important to write those things down so you can hear all those things and then communicate. And when someone's questioning, really wonder why why their experiences think that's not important to you. I love that. I think that there are there are kind of two situations that I experience as a planner. There are certain circumstances where the numbers aren't working. So mm -hmm. like in, um, you know, just, and, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, some of the people that are in that situation where, you know, there's more money going out than it's coming in and it's not a retirement situation. Oh, it's just yeah. a problem. Um, they often can't afford a financial planner. Like I hope they're listening to this conversation uh, yeah. because this is a way to access financial advice for everyone that's democratized that doesn't have a cost. So I don't experience those situations as frequently, but there are circumstances where needs have to become wants because the numbers just absolutely don't work. Um, but in many other situations, there's shame, judgment, or imposter syndrome where it doesn't need to be there because it's quite possible to do something whether the person, the other person in the room values it or not. Yeah. And, and that's where it's looking like, as I said, is we'd all love an Africa trip, but reality is we might not be able to afford that. And so it's looking at what is it about that, that trip and being told financially, that's probably not a smart decision. You could go, but you're not going to be able to retire for the rest of your life. And so what is it about that Africa trip? Is it seeing giraffes? So where could you go close to see giraffes? Could you go to San Diego Zoo or could you go to these zoos? And like really thinking outside the box of, yes, financially that might not be able to work, but is there something that could get you closer to some of those goals and be able to achieve some of those wants that you wanted, but make it more financially sustainable. I love that. And I think I always go back to a phrase, you can do anything, but not everything. And yeah. so sometimes it's just a matter of prioritizing that you have um, emphasized something that's important to other people. You know, maybe it's keeping up with the Joneses and it is that red car, but you don't really care about the car. And then yeah. there's other things that other people just 
aren't, isn't on their bucket list that's really important to you or your family. Um, and so, you know, in that case, like, um, you having that space to identify what matters to you and then having, um, also the space to work on getting to that goal can be really valuable. And I think it's also important of being able to, you be able to make the decisions on what you value, knowing that it might take longer to retire if you decided to do some other things. And it is for you to decide because some people enjoy their job and some people want to get out of their job like tomorrow. Yes. So <laughs> it's really reminding yourself that like, if working affords you that ability to do some things that you wouldn't normally be able to do, just be able to be aware that you know what those options are. And so it is talking to your financial planner, talking to a counselor about what those gives and takes are. And I think that so many different aspects of our lives are being able to see both sides. It's like on financial planning, what are the, if I do this, what happens? Like in a relationship, if we're having a communication problem, like where is that coming from? Because there's always a give and take on things and it's looking at seeing both sides of um, our decision making. Um, and that's sometimes something that we don't really look at very often. Well, I think these skills require practice. So if you are a listener here, then maybe there's just one topic that seems to be an ongoing frustration that is either, um, you know, about money or just about communication that you can kind of, it's, it's so much easier to pick one topic than to just be like, I'm stressed or this relationship isn't working. But if you can identify something more specific, I would assume that that would be an easier pathway to getting to what's going on under the hood. It's so true. And some, so many people come in and just say they're stressed or they're anxious and happy. Yeah. So much of it is breaking it down and figuring out where that's coming from, because so often we don't identify those things and identifying those wants. Like I'm picking a car, like I want a red car, but does the model matter? And the model might matter and it might not. And so it's really picking and choosing those important things. I love it. Well, I'm going to make sure that people have a way to find you um, at my motivation. And then is there anything else you want to make sure that people kind of leave with or as they're trying to think through their path to more effective communication? Well, I think an important thing is, is that um, what we tend to forget about is that our emotions are allowed and like our wants are allowed. We don't need to have rational reasons for those. But when we make those choices, we should look at what those pros and cons are. Mm. And part of that is really looking in yourself. And I think that's something that is important is to see where our, our values are, our personal values, and know that they're just as important as anybody else's. Well, I love that, um, talking about your values, which can be difficult to identify, but if you find them are so valuable and then the honor your emotions, but not in a way that's only short-term or impulsive. Yes. Tough job, but somebody has to do it. And you are your best advocate. You're the person who can tell when you're feeling good. So do that for yourself. Yes, I agree. Thanks, soccer friend, for joining me. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Women's Money Wisdom Podcast. If you found value in this episode, the best way you can support the podcast is to forward an episode to a friend or leave a review. Go to pearlplan.com and the podcast link to get all the resources and links mentioned.